I really appreciate your taking this time to see me ambassador to the land. Among my people, it is considered an honor to aid any true seeker in his quest. Do you mind if I record? No, not at all. So, can you tell me a little bit about what your people believe? Um, it is, um, it is very hard to explain. We do not believe in any individual god or gods, but rather we believe that the soul is, uh, what is a good term, a non-localized phenomenon. I'm not sure I understand what that means. Well, if I project a beam of light at the wall, you see the light on the wall, but the wall is not the source of the light. It comes in from somewhere else. The soul is also a projection. It does not exist inside us any more than the light exists inside the wall. But this shell is the only way we can perceive it. We believe that the universe itself is conscious in a way we can never truly understand. It is engaged in a search for meaning. So it breaks itself apart, investing its own consciousness in every form of life. We are the universe trying to understand itself. May I... May I ask you a question now? Of course. For you, personally, what is the defining moment of your belief? Not the history, the doctrines, but the emotional core of it. On the night before our Lord was crucified, he spent the night alone in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he knew that they were going to come for him. And in a moment of weakness, he asked if this cup could pass from him. If he could be spared the pain and death that would come with the morning. And of course, the cup would not pass and the soldiers would come to Gethsemane. But he did not have to be there when they arrived. He could have chosen to leave, to postpone the inevitable for a few hours or even days. He knew what would happen, but he chose to stay, to sacrifice himself, and thus atone for the sins of others. It's a very fragile human moment. And I've often thought about that night. And I honestly don't know if I would have had the courage to have stayed. 